Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Low Carbon Project and this is episode 10 and it's going to be another AMA, Ask Matt Anything and um, yeah, last time, last episode was the painting Yeah, that's it uh, yeah. and now we're inside for the first time, which is great yeah, It's a little out. bit warmer than uh, all the previous AMAs Yeah um, So yeah, I suppose best place to start, as usual What have you been getting up to since the last, last episode? Yeah, so since the painting, uh, we were able to fit up the fence posts against the building exterior, so we closed off the boundaries all the way around. Then we waxed the hardcore on the drive. We had some hardcore already spread, but we whacked that. So we've now got a parking space out the front. Uh, we then came inside and we laid the underfloor heating and the screed in the floor. Um, and then we started building a supporting wall, which is taking the first floor joists. And that's where we're at at the minute. Nice. And obviously we are called the Low Carbon Project. So one of the main aims of this build was to make the house out of hemp. As yeah. you can see, this house is made from a plant. Um, so what I'm sure all of you are massively interested in is what kind of impact that has um, you know, on the carbon footprint of the house as a whole. So yeah, based on our calculation, yeah. um, using LCA Planetary UK, um, and they basically estimate that uh, it's about a two to one ratio. So for this stuff, the hempcrete, yeah. every tonne that you use or every tonne that's produced, it captures two tonnes out of the atmosphere. Um, can you remember how many tonnes you use in total? Uh, what, do you remember what it was, Phil? Phil? 15 tonnes. 15 tonnes. So, yeah. so it's extracted, so 215 is 30. Yeah. So that's minus 30. Yeah, so that's before we've started then. So in the growing of the hemp, it's absorbed that before we've even begun construction with it. Yeah. Mad. So there you go. And, and then it also sense. it absorbs, once it's in the walls, it carries on absorbing uh, carbon as well. What, while it's going off? Yeah, while it's setting. And also the manufacturing process of it is a lot less than if you were using like a brick and a block as well. We haven't got the figures at the minute. It'd be interesting to know, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. maybe that's something you guys can help with, uh, you know. We're not so good at maths, are we? <laughs> but it would be interesting to know, you know, at this stage of the build, where would a traditional, um, you know, brick and block work, where would they be in terms of, you know, you're starting the whole build, you're starting at minus yeah. 30 just by, you know, changing one um, one element, one material. So it'd be interesting to know what the... Uh, Do a comparison between yeah, the two. Yeah, the yeah. cost of them, because they're obviously going to be way in the plus, plus figures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, leading on to the next section, thank you very much for all your interactions. We've, uh, we've had a lot of comments, lots of questions, so we have tried to squeeze them all in. Um, and yeah, let's proceed with the questions. So question one is from Elwood2012. Um, their question is, is the building vulnerable to rain or hot sun before the exterior plaster is applied? So obviously before the rendering. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, um, this is my first hempcrete building and also uh, it wasn't left exposed long enough for me to tell. There wasn't any, we didn't see any bad effects. But we did speak around to a couple of people that are familiar with it and uh, one of the guys said they pressure tested a hempcrete block under, like, uh, uh, under water for 72 hours to try and replicate, I think it was something like one or two years worth of rain. What was it? It was spraying, it was spraying water out the block. It was, sorry, it wasn't held, yeah, yeah. So they were spraying the hempcrete block for 72 hours to replicate one or two years rainfall and it was absolutely fine. It stood stood the test well. Yeah. I also, I suppose you did it in the summer, which helps. Yeah, Although yeah. We didn't have a great summer. It wasn't overly wet. Um, but essentially, it's fine to have water on the outer surface, the outer face, it's fine. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. in fact, that's one of the things they said was, yeah, cover the tops of the walls, um, before, because we put the roof on after, we had to keep on covering the tops of the walls while we were doing the wall, because what you don't want to happen is rain to fall on the top of the wall and to sink down into the wall. Rain against the face of the wall is okay, but the other one not. Gotcha. <coughs> and question two is from Adrian Gaines 582 um, What is the position with agreement certification on hempcrete houses? Yeah, well, it's a bit of a funny one because it's so new and so many people are so unfamiliar with it. But I, um, when I was trying it, it wasn't planning that was a problem, it was building control. And when I was contacting round to try and find someone that would deal with this building, um, 
most of them wanted like a, some certification for it or something, but because this is a cast in situ method and not made in a factory, um, we don't have any certification for it. So what I ended up doing was we found um, a company called Jai Building Control, JHI, um, and they have done a building before, so they were familiar with it, so they were happy to take it on. So that's what I ended up doing, was just going with someone that had dealt with it before. Yeah, I suppose it'd be handy if it becomes more prominent, and then it just, yeah. Over yeah, we, time, if more people do it, it will get easier, because there'll be more building control um, offices that will be allowed. Exactly, to yeah. It. When there's more demand for it, they start, they, oh, that was what I was told by them, when there's more demand for it, they will start looking into it more, and they'll start making their teams familiar with the uh, material. Yeah. And question three is from Sometimes You Can. Uh, what made you choose hemp? It's a nice and easy one. Yeah, well, um, I like trying new things. Um, I wanted, I'm keen, I'm an environmentalist, I, I would say, to some extent. Um, and so I wanted to use it, I wanted to try something new. I looked into the workability of it and it looked really nice to use. And then what it came down to was cost for me. And I looked in and it wasn't so much different in cost compared to like a standard build. So that's why I thought, right, I'm going to go for it and give it a go. So it's interesting you mentioned costs because that takes us nicely into the next question from uh, Philip, Philip Alder. Um, how much did you save on materials by pouring and forming on site as opposed to using uh, pre-made hempcrete blocks? Right, yeah, okay. Well, when you build a house out of hempcrete blocks, it's a completely different method to what we've used. I think they have to do like a, a skin of hempcrete blocks and there's a tim they might have to clad it. And there's, I'm not actually that familiar with it. A bit more like it. a build up, like a traditional brick building. So you would have sort of layers. Of I think so, yeah. So it's hard to compare like directly, but if you did um, compare like the volume of hemp that goes into hempcrete blocks versus the volume that we've used, it was, it came to, um, what was it? How much more was it? It was. Double, double it. Yeah, yeah. so I've, actually got, it I've actually got the figure here. Go on, what was it? What um, was it? So <laughs> hempcrete blocks um, for the same square meterage would have cost uh, 20,000. That's just for the blocks. Um, and you spent on uh, hempcrete bales and lime and everything that went with it. Can you remember how much you spent? Yeah, it was about 11,000, wasn't it? 11,250, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you think, so that's... So our 11,250 was for the lime and for the hemp and everything. Yeah, and the 20 uh, grand is just the blocks. The 20 grand is just the blocks, so they then need mortar to go in between them as well as all the other layers that might need to add on. Yeah, maybe but they even put in a layer of insulation like you would in a normal cavity brick block wall. Uh, yeah, I'm not so sure of it, but I think they do it for speed. I Good think question, it goes up though, a lot but yeah. potentially by forming it and putting in... Unfortunately, we don't yet know the labour cost. But yeah, um, yeah you, but, you and Phil had to do all of that. Well, that's um, the thing. If you're doing a self-build, if it's yeah. for someone that's interested in hemp and they're doing a self-build, I think it's, it's far better to do that because you don't need the skill level to do a casting situ method as you would to lay a block. Don't put yourself down. And it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> right, into the next question. Um, why? Oh, sorry. This is from Lucas... Oh, that's a hard name. Lucas Thyssen? Um, I'm not going to try and spell that out. Um, why did you not choose... Uh, why did you not choose for a double stud wall with permanent shuttering at each side? Okay, yeah. So, um, I think the reason we did that was because, firstly, if you're going to do timber on in and outside skin, you've got double the amount of timber that you're paying for. So, um, you've got double the cost in material. Um, so we, we, you have to have one timber frame in the structure. So I thought we'd do, so we need one and I decided I'd prefer to do it on the inside. I understand the benefit of putting it on the outside. And but that's, that's these boards. I don't know if the camera can see it, but that's these boards underneath. That's what they're talking about. These timber boards. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, f they're fixed directly to the timber frame. Yeah. But yeah, I think it mainly, mainly cost. Plus also, I mean, if you were, if, when you're actually casting the hempcrete, because we had the benefit of having the timber on the inside, and you imagine the wood wall warp was there, and we had all this space on the other side of the timber, mm. on the, and then on the outside, we're filling in the wall. You've got a lot of space to get into the wall to actually place the hempcrete. If you had a timber frame on the outside, I would imagine it would be a lot diff more difficult to be going in between all the diagonal supports and actually to get in the wall to, to place the hemp. Yeah, okay. So I think yeah, it would be really difficult. And the process you guys did in terms of, because I remember the video, and you were like moving the shuttering 
Yeah, you're, you're essentially it. sort of going round in a you know go around like that, won't yeah, you? Start yeah. at the bottom, go round, and up you went. Yeah, um, and that seemed relatively simple. Yeah, that was generally. yeah. I mean, that was yeah, hard, brilliant. Hard that work, was... time consuming, but relatively yeah. simple. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Phil, Phil did most of it anyway, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, I was just kicking <laughs> back. <laughs> Leave that. <Fair> <laughs> Uh, on to the next question from, uh, this seems like a company actually, Supreme Home Renovations Limited. <coughs> It'd be interesting to hear from them. Not sure what they do. Maybe it's uh, someone that's looking at doing it themselves. It'd be, right. yeah, interesting. So whoever you are, Supreme Home Renovations Limited, get in touch uh, if you've got any projects coming up or if you want to have a chat with Matt. Uh, but on to the actual question. Um, they've noticed that you are not hemping the roof structure. So they've asked, was this a cost based decision yeah mainly yeah because uh if you yeah for obvious reasons you've got a much greater surface area on the roof than you do on just the ceiling mm. not only that i think also if you if you're making the hempcrete uh, uh, to follow the rafter line you have what you what you have is a, they call it an envelope which is the insulation that surrounds the building and everything inside that is meant to trap the heat of the building if i'm doing the insulation at ceiling level it's a smaller envelope if I then include the loft inside that envelope, it's going to be a cold space that's not got a radiator in, that's going to be drawing some of the heat from the rooms below. Mm. So I thought, keep the envelope um, around the heated rooms, basically, as well. Yeah. So next question from uh, SDC12345. Why did you use the framing method that you did as opposed to a standard stick frame? Okay, yeah, there's been a, apparently Phil's been saying there's been a lot of people that have been saying about stick frame, which I'm not actually familiar with that terminology, to be honest. But after he looked into it, uh, what we think it might be is when you do like a box on a box. So you build the bottom timber, from the ground story timber frame and then separately, and then you'll go on and build the first story timber frame on top of that. Um, that originally was what I wanted to do. That's after looking into everything, that's what we uh, planned to do. But when we got a structural engineer involved, what he designed was what we did. Um, but actually on reflection, I would definitely do that again, because if you imagine doing two separate boxes on top of one another, you would have to, to give you a basic example, you would have to level every timber on the bottom floor, then you would have to level every timber on the second floor, because they're independent. You'd have to do double cuts, you'd have to cut one timber, cut a second cut for the second timber as opposed to what we did, which was a timber running all the way from the ground up to the roof. It's just one cut, it's one level. So on the whole, I think it was a lot easier. Right, penultimate question from user RTO. Um, why did you use a traditional cement mixer rather than a bespoke hempcrete mixer? I mean, I'm not sure, what is a? He probably means a pan mixer. Oh, okay. Because when I started looking into it, everything pointed towards using a pan mixer. Uh, which I can understand the benefits of because I think they're quite big mixers, so they'll probably be quite ideal if you've got a team of guys doing a hempcrete building and you want to mix big quantities at a time. Um, I was just doing this with Phil, and we had um, we had this this bell mixer because when we spoke to Graham Durant, the guy that we mentioned in an earlier episode, who gave us he's been great, gave us loads of advice on how to do everything. He said, "No, you can just use the bell mixer." Um, which worked perfectly. It did plenty enough t to keep two men going on a hemp wall. Mm. Plus, also, when I was originally shopping around for the pan mixer to, to hire one, they were so sparse and no one had one. I actually spoke to some farmer down in Derbyshire or something who, uh, when I spoke to him, he said... It's well, a we're, long way to drive to get a Well, mixer. yeah, but he said, well, we're building an extra machine. Right. So, <laughs> so it might be ready in a few months. So for that reason as well, bell mixer is more readily available yeah. than a pan mixer would be. So maybe, again, it comes down to the whole, if there was more of this going on, more demand, then, yeah, there might be a few more mixes available that yeah. are a bit bigger. Yeah, I Plus mean... Plus you'll need, like, 10 guys to run it about. Yeah, and, I mean, also you could, if you were having a team of guys and you can't get a pan mixer, you could have a few bell mixers on the go at once, I suppose, um, if you needed to. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, it was a, it was an extended. It wasn't just a standard bell mixer. It'd been, it had like a welded plate on the middle, so it was extra long. So we could fit a half a bale of hempcrete in it per mix. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was a bit bigger than normal. Wasn't yeah, a bit bigger than normal. And after mixing, it turned out about four or four buckets of uh, gorilla buckets of hemp. Nice. Yeah. And the next question is from a particularly special 
viewer, probably our favourite subscriber out of everyone. It's it's nine year old James, which is is your nephew. Definitely the favourite viewer. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. And uh, James has asked, what is the first bit of furniture you're planning on putting in the house, and will it be made of hemp? Well, yeah, I suppose. Yes, James. We've uh, we've got a coffee yeah. table out of hemp here, and we've. Both yeah. got some hemp sofas, They're so actually yeah. Really comfy as well. They are really nice, aren't they? Yeah, and warm. <laughs> yeah, my bum is quite warm. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got through some questions there, didn't we? Yeah. Well, we've got a few more questions for you, but now we're going into the quick fire round. So prepare yourself, Matthew. Braced. <laughs> Question one from Martine Wall: How do you remove the moisture from the hempcrete? And what about the timber structure? Does this get damp in the process? Uh, the moisture removes itself from the walls and the, the timber probably does get a bit damp, but it's treated and it's stored outside in the timber merchant. So not to the point where it's going to cause it rot. Question two from Adrian Skelton 9. How long did the hempcrete phase take? Four weeks. <laughs> So I'm sort of, I, feel like, I feel like I'm guessing. I don't actually know the answer. Yeah, it was about four weeks, I think. About four weeks. Yeah. And lots of hard graft. Yeah. Maybe, was, yeah, it was four weeks, wasn't it? Was it five? Four to five weeks. It wasn't any more than five. Right, question three from Jack Hines. What sort of pre-mixed lime did you use? Uh, I don't actually know. It came, it came mixed in a bag, <laughs> <laughs> bag of rubies to use, to be honest. Yeah. So pretty regular. It was. Pretty, they knew we were hand casting it, so it's actually got written on the bags for hand castings. But I don't know what they've done with it. Yeah. Lime green. Lime green. It was. Yeah. Okay. It was lime green. Lincoln biscuits. And question four, from Urban FPV three eight five two. Where did you source the hempcrete bales from? That's got to be an easy one. Well, I mentioned about Graham Durrant. Uh, he actually helped me out getting the materials and stuff before, but where he got them from himself where was, uh, it's written on the bag, I think, East Yorkshire hemp. This is where he got them from. There you go. East Yorkshire hemp. <laughs> Next question from user BM. Is the render coat very durable and will it need annual care? Well, the render was painted with a silicate masonry paint, which you saw in the last episode, and they say that that needs recoating every 10 years. Uh, so as long as it's got a good coat of paint on the top, I don't see why the render would need any work on it underneath or would, uh, with the road. Um, we also heard that apparently before that when a crack is formed in a hemp, in a lime wall, sorry, that when it gets wet, it closes itself up, apparently. So no, it shouldn't need annual care. Like every 10 years we're looking at them is what I'm expecting. Depends how well you painted it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Next question from Peter Melia. Have you had any problems with the hempcrete shrinking? That's interesting, actually, because when I was looking into doing this, they I saw one of the things I remember, they were saying about putting a fibreglass quilt on top of the DPC before you do the hempcrete walls right. in, in a view of it maybe contracting. And there being so there's no gap there, the uh, the fiberglass or whatever would fill the gap. But we've not seen any contraction at all, none whatsoever. It's not moved at all from what we've seen. Maybe that has an impact depending on where you are in the world making it. Possibly, maybe if it dries out too quickly yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Maybe. Ultimately, the answer is no. Yeah, yeah. Next question from Madeline Drescu. Um, how do you know how much hemp is needed for one cubic metre of finished wool? Uh, it's five bales of hemp for one cubic metre. And for one bale of hemp, you need two lime. So it's 10 bags of lime and five bales of hemp for a cubic metre. Well, that brings us to the end of the questions. Um, so I suppose next up for you in the house, obviously you're inside now. So what, what are the next few um, items on the list for you to complete? Well, tomorrow we're actually, I've said uh, earlier, we started building the supporting wall to take the first floor joists, but we're going to make it a hemp feature wall. So it's quite interesting. It's going to be, we're going to be going into fireproofing the wall because a standard wall usually you put a fireproof board across the face of it. Because we want to make it a feature hemp wall, we need that to encase the timbers. So we've had to do a bit of a, a, a unique method to fireproof the wall. We're also going to be mixing it by hand. Um, so that's going to be interesting. And then we're going to be going on to underfloor heating and, and all the things that we'll be doing in the interior of the building, making it smart, doing some fun stuff, hopefully. 
And I hear, so the next episode I hear is going to be a rather fun one. Uh, Phil's already dubbed it the awesome episode. It is um, awesome. Have you seen it, have you? It's really good. I haven't really seen good, the first yeah. edit, but yeah. it's going to be essentially an episode uh, from ground all the way up to the roof, external, and it's going to be a massive long time lapse of some decent music. Um, and I don't know about you, but I love a time lapse. Yeah. So Plus. seeing the whole building go up in one big time lapse. Plus the music uh, was donated from uh, Gala. Gala, a couple of guys that are on this uh, Garlic Gala music channel, is it, Phil? Yeah. That have donated the music as well for it. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah it's really good. <laughs> and lastly, we'd like to thank you guys. I think this has been a great episode. Uh, we've had loads of questions. Uh, couldn't have happened without you. Um, on to next year, I suppose. We've got five more episodes until the next Ask Matt Anything. Um, but you know, leading on to the future, I suppose we want you guys to get more involved. Um, tell us what you want to see because we, um, you know, Matt's going to be finishing the house up in the next few months. Um, you know, maybe there's someone out there who is uh, currently thinking about building a hemp house, halfway through building a hemp house, maybe even living in a hemp house. It'd be really nice next year if we can get um, on location, I suppose, and yeah, start, go and you visit know, build someone. a community, and everybody can help each other out. And okay. um, yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. See you next time. And um, that's that. That's it from us. Yeah, thanks, guys. Cheers, guys.